Welcome back to the third part of today's lecture. So today's lecture, one of the things that we're looking at is this somewhat harder question of when does ax equal b have a solution for all vectors b and rm? So we've seen in this example that this is not at all, this may or may, this may not be possible for every particular matrix. So the question is, when is it possible? So the nice thing is, and you can see already down here, is that there's actually a theorem that will tell us exactly when we do have a solution. But to explain the solution, let me just kind of recall something first from last class. So last class, we talked about the span of a particular set of vectors. And the span of a collection of vectors is all linear combinations of those vectors. So this is all linear combinations. So you fix a bunch of vectors, in this case p vectors, and then you form all linear combinations, you dump them into a set, and that's called the span of those vectors. Now we're going to use this terminology to talk about when the columns of a matrix span Rm. So the columns of a m by n matrix, okay, so here's our matrix and these are our columns, we say that the column spam Rm is means that when you take those columns, A1 through AN, you form the span like we do up here. So what that means is you do all the linear combinations of each, com uh, each of the columns. At the end of the day, you end up with RM. So what this means is that every vector B in RM is in the span of A1 through AN. That means that B can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. So using this terminology, we get the answer to that question that I asked a couple, uh, couple of pages ago. Right? So let's say you have an M by N matrix, and then the following are equivalent. So just to make sure that you're aware of what this means, because this terminology appears a lot in math, what this means is that all the statements are all true or all false, okay? So what it means is if you have a matrix that fails to have one of the properties, then it, fa it fails to have all of the properties. On the other hand, if it has one of the properties, then it will have all of the properties, okay? So what it says is, well, each for each BRM, you have a solution. So that's the question, okay? When do you have a solution for every B? Well, the theorem says you will have a solution if B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Okay, But that is just another way of rephrasing saying that the columns of A span Rm. Now, the B and C, maybe these are kind of still new concepts of span. Uh, the concept of spanning and linear combinations are still concepts you're trying to grasp. But there's actually a nice, easy way of kind of understanding the original question. And it comes in point D here, which is that a has to have a pivot in each row. So the question that we asked, okay, when does AX equal B have a solution? You can boil it down to just row reducing your matrix and then looking at the pivots. Do you have a pivot in each row? Yes, well then you have a solution to every B. Does it have, is there a row that's missing a pivot? Well, then you can't find, then there are some B for which you can't find a solution. Okay, so just as a note, uh, I want to highlight a particular fact here is that this statement is about the coefficient matrix, right? About the coefficient matrix. So make sure you're pay applying this theorem to the coefficient matrix, not the augmented matrix. And I would say that this is an extremely useful result. Okay, so let, let's go revisit the example that we had done before. So this was our example A equals 1, 2, 3, 2, 8, 14, 1, 3, 5. And we saw that there are some B for which this, this uh, some B that you cannot uh, solve the equation AX equals B. Okay, so and but why here's another way of uh, seeing that. We can do row reducing. 
row reduce A. So if you were row to reduce A, and I'll just skip the steps because you guys are becoming experts of it. If I were to row reduce this matrix, I would end up with 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 8, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so I end up with this matrix. I see that there is a row with no pivot. And I guess it's better to point down right here because there's a row with no pivot. So AX equals B does not have a solution for all B inside of R3. And the reason it doesn't have a solution is if we're using the theorem. We, sh we Our matrix A does not have a pivot in each row, so it does not have a solution for all A. So just to leave you off before the break here, here's a particular problem. I have a matrix, one, two, three, four, and I want you to show that this, ma this equation, matrix equation, AX equals B, will have a always have a solution regardless of what the values of B1 and B2 are. To spend a little bit of time, try to crank that out for yourself, and then after the break, we'll, we'll look at the answer and finish up uh, today's lecture.